Just about everyone who is diagnosed with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease receives certain blood tests which help to come up with this diagnosis. The goal of this presentation is to discuss some of the common blood tests people with hyperthyroid conditions receive, as well as some of the other tests which can help with the diagnosis. I'm also going to list the general reference ranges, although keep in mind that different, different labs will have different reference ranges. I like to begin by talking about the TSH. Many doctors rely on this test for the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Now just to keep in mind that the TSH is a pituitary hormone. There is still a lot of uncertainty regarding the reference ranges of this test. And in the past, the standard reference range was 0.5 to 5.0. And some labs and doctors will still use these reference ranges. Now many labs are beginning to use lower reference ranges, and this is the reference range I look at. Although I definitely look at the TSH levels of my patients, and being diagnosed with Graves' disease in the past, I still continue to monitor my own TSH levels when doing follow-up blood tests, but I don't rely on this value alone. Next, I'd like to discuss some of the different thyroid hormone levels. Total T4. This is the total amount of thyroxine in the body and is usually increased in people with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease. It is not as accurate as measuring the free level of thyroid hormone. Free T4. This measures the free form of the hormone, which is more accurate of the body's thyroid hormone levels. This test is typically high in people with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, although it is negative in people with subclinical hyperthyroidism. Total T3. This is the total amount of triiodothyronine and like T4 is usually increased in people with hyperthyroid conditions. Free T3. Like free T4, free T3 also measures the free form of the hormone and is more accurate than measuring the bound levels of this hormone. T3 uptake. This test measures the amount of thyroxine binding globulin and increased levels are common in hyperthyroidism. Reverse T3. The RT3 test is more commonly positive in people with hypothyroid conditions. When the body is under a good deal of stress and therefore needs to conserve energy, it will convert excess T4 in the body to reverse T3 in order to clear out the extra T4. According to some sources, adrenal gland problems can inhibit the conversion of T4 to T3, which produces higher quantities of RT3. This can also happen when iron is low. Thyroglobulin this is a protein produced by the thyroid gland and is commonly high in hyperthyroid conditions as well as thyroid cancer. High levels of this usually is due to inflammation and or damage to the thyroid gland. Let's now discuss some of the different types of thyroid antibodies. TPO antibodies. These antibodies confirm the presence of an autoimmune thyroid condition, but they're not specific for Graves' disease. Thyroid peroxidase antibodies are positive in most people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. However, many people with Graves' disease also test positive for these antibodies. TSI antibodies. Thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins are TSH receptor antibodies which are positive in most people, about 70 to 75% of those with Graves' disease. However, it is important to understand that just because someone does not test positive for these blood tests does not mean that they are negative for Graves' disease. There are two other types of TSH receptor antibodies, but this is the main one I recommend for my patients with hyperthyroidism to get tested for. Okay, thyroglobulin antibodies, they're not as common in people with Graves' disease. Um, the presence of autoantibodies to thyroglobulin can lead to destruction of a thyroid gland and are more common in people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In addition to the thyroid bl blood test I discussed, some of the following tests can be used in people with hyperthyroid conditions. You'll notice that I'll list both conventional and alternative tests. Radioactive iodine uptake test. Now this test involves swallowing a liquid or capsule consisting of a small dosage of radioactive iodine in order to measure the amount of radioactive iodine taken up by the thyroid gland. Now this is usually done 6 and 24 hours after swallowing the radioactive iodine and a high uptake is suggestive of Graves disease although it's not conclusive of this condition. If there is also an uneven distribution of the tracer then this can indicate nodules or a multinodule goiter. Many people with hyperthyroidism have asked me whether it is necessary to obtain this test, and even though they use a low dosage of radioactive iodine, in my opinion this test isn't necessary in most cases. Adrenal stress index test. This is a saliva-based test which is typically performed by holistic doctors to measure the health of the adrenal glands. 
Many people with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease have compromised adrenal glands. And for those people who are looking to restore the health back to normal through a natural treatment protocol, correcting the adrenal gland problem is essential. This test measures four different cortisol levels according to the circadian pattern, along with the DHA levels, 17-hydroxyprogesterone, and tests for a few other values. Hair mineral analysis test. Yet another test performed by holistic doctors as this measures the mineral content of the hair. Minerals that are tested include calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, iron, copper, selenium, chromium, zinc, phosphorus, as well as heavy metals such as aluminum, mercury, cadmium, and lead. The hair mineral analysis test does more than just test for minerals as it can provide important information on one's metabolic rate, carbohydrate and to um, tolerance, adrenal and immune system health, and this test can be very helpful when it comes to modifying one's diet and or recommending certain nutritional supplements. Now, of course, there are many other tests that can be performed, but in addition to the blood test, I figured I would just list a few of the other tests most commonly performed by endocrinologists, such as the radioactive iodine uptake test, and natural doctors, such as the adrenal testing and hair mineral analysis. While these tests can be very valuable, what you need to understand is that blood tests alone don't tell the entire story. While blood tests can be very valuable, you can't rely on them alone. They can provide important information when it comes to the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, but they don't tell us anything about the causes of the problem. This is why I always recommend consulting with a holistic doctor who focuses on endocrine disorders, as they will not only look at many of the blood tests I discussed in this, in this presentation, but will most likely recommend some of the additional tests I discussed to help detect the underlying cause of your hyperthyroid condition. To receive more natural health tips on hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, please visit the website gravesdiseasebook.com where you can get a free guide entitled The Six Steps on How to Treat Hyperthyroidism and Graves' Disease Through Natural Methods. This guide contains 100% pure content and is not a sales pitch for any product or service. You also might want to check out my recently released book entitled Natural Treatment Solutions for Hyperthyroidism and Graves' Disease, which you can find on Amazon or the Barnes & Noble website. And this is a real book and not an e-book I quickly put together. Thank you for watching this presentation as I hope you found the information to be valuable. Take care now.